Hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will discuss important questions of distillation, which are mostly asked in an interview. If you know the answer to any question, please comment in the comment box. And if you like my video, please like, comment, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel which is Chemical Idda. So let's see the questions. What is distillation? So, distillation is a gas liquid operation. It is the process of separating components of a mixture based on different boiling points. Hence in this method, the components of a liquid mixture are separated using thermal energy since the difference in vapor pressures of different components is responsible for such a separation. It is also called fractionation or fractional distillation. Example, purification of alcohol, desalination, making liquefied gases from the air. The separation of crude petroleum into gasoline, kerosene. Now next question. Explain the distillation process. In distillation, the two phases involved, that are liquid and vapor phases. The vapor phase is created by supplying heat to the liquid. And mass is transferred from both the phases to one another by vaporization from the liquid phase and by condensation from the vapor phase and hence the composition of the more volatile component in the vapor phase increases and that of the less volatile component in the liquid hence the vapor is always richer in the more volatile component then the liquid from which it is formed. Hence the basic requirement for separation of components by distillation is that the composition of the vapor be different from the composition of the liquid with which it is in equilibrium. If the vapor composition is the same as the liquid composition, the distillation technique will not affect a separation. Now next question. What is a binary mixture? The two component system is called binary mixture. An example of a binary mixture is a mixture of methanol and water. It is binary mixture as it consists two components that is methanol and water. Now next question. Define volatile liquid. A liquid that tends to vaporize is called volatile liquid. Now next question. Which one is the more volatile liquid from acetone and water? The liquid with a lower boiling point is called more volatile. Hence in a mixture of acetone and water. The boiling point of acetone is 56.7 degrees Celsius. And water is 100 degrees Celsius. As the boiling point of acetone is lower than water. Hence acetone is more volatile than water. Now next question. What is meant by a more volatile or lighter component? In a binary mixture, the component with a lower boiling point and the component with a higher vapor pressure at a given temperature is termed as the more volatile or lighter component. For example, in a binary mixture of methanol and water, 
The boiling point of methanol is 64.7 degrees Celsius. And the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. As the boiling point of methanol is less than water. Hence methanol is a more volatile or lighter component. Now next question. What is meant by less volatile or heavier components? In a binary mixture, the component with a higher boiling point. That is the component with a lower vapor pressure at a given temperature. Is termed as the less volatile or heavier component. In example of a binary mixture of methanol and water. The boiling point of methanol is 64.7 degrees Celsius. And the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. As the boiling point of water is more than methanol. Hence water is a less volatile or heavier component. Now next question. Define volatility of A. So, the volatility of A is defined as the ratio of the partial pressure of A to the mole fraction of A in the liquid phase. Hence formula for volatility can be written as volatility of A is equal to PA divided by XA. Similarly, volatility of B is PB divided by XB where PA is equal to the partial pressure of A. PB is equal to the partial pressure of B. XA is equal to mole fraction of A in the liquid phase. And XB is equal to mole fraction of B in the liquid phase. Now next question. Define relative volatility. So, relative volatility is a measure of separability by distillation. The relative volatility of component A with respect to component B is the ratio of the volatility of A, that is the more volatile component, to the volatility of B. It is denoted by the symbol alpha AB or alpha. Hence from definition relative volatility or alpha AB can be written as alpha AB is equal to volatility of A divided by volatility of B. As we know, volatility of A is equal to PA divided by XA. Hence alpha AB can be written as PA divided by XA divided by PB divided by XB. Hence we get alpha AB is equal to PA XB divided by PB XA. But as we know, partial pressure is equal to mole fraction of component in vapor phase into total pressure. Hence we can write PA is equal to YA into P and PB is equal to YB into P. Hence from this alpha AB can be written as After solving it we get Alpha AB is equal to YA divided by YB Divided by XA divided by XB Thus, the relative volatility is The ratio of The concentration ratio of A to B in the vapor phase To that in the liquid phase now next question. What is the significance of relative volatility? So significance of relative volatility is Relative volatility is A measure of the separability by distillation. It is a measure of the ease With which the components are separated. Hence When alpha is equal to 1 Separation by distillation is not possible. The separation by distillation is possible. 
For relative volatility values greater than 1. The larger the value of the relative volatility. The easier is the separation by distillation. Now next question. Define Rolt's law. So, Rolt's law states that the equilibrium partial pressure of a component in a solution at a given temperature is equal to the product of its vapor pressure in the pure state and its mole fraction in the liquid phase. Example, for a binary two-component system, PA is the equilibrium partial pressure of A. PA0 is the vapor pressure of A in the pure state. XA is the mole fraction of A in the liquid phase. From Rolf's law we can write PA is equal to PA0 into XA. Similarly we can write PB is equal to PB0 into XB. But as we know XA plus XB is equal to 1. So we can write PB is equal to PB0 into 1 minus XA where PB is the equilibrium partial pressure of B. PB0 is the vapor pressure of B in the pure state. And XB is the mole fraction of B in the liquid phase. Now next question. Define Dalton's law. So, Dalton's law states that the total pressure exerted by a gas that is vapor mixture is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of the components present in it. Thus, it expresses the additive nature of the partial pressures. Example, for a binary system. Hence we can write P is equal to PA plus PB where PA is the equilibrium partial pressure of A. PB is the equilibrium partial pressure of B. And P is the total pressure. Now next question. What is the azeotrope? So, an azeotrope is a liquid mixture with an equilibrium vapor of the same composition as the liquid. The dew point and bubble point are identical at azeotropic composition and the mixture vaporizes at a single temperature. So azeotropes are called constant boiling mixtures. When an azeotrope is boiled, the vapor produced will have the same composition as the liquid from which it is produced. Boiling of an ordinary solution takes place from the bubble point to the dew point. Whereas the boiling point of an azeotrope remains constant till the entire liquid is vaporized. Now next question. What is the minimum boiling azeotrope? So, the minimum boiling azeotrope occurs if the solution exhibits positive deviation from ideality. Hence this azeotrope is also called as a positive azeotrope. Minimum boiling azeotrope will boil at a temperature lower than the boiling points of pure components. Hence they are called minimum boiling azeotropes. These types of mixtures exhibit the highest vapor pressure and lowest boiling point. Example, an azeotropic mixture of 96% ethanol and 4% water is a positive azeotrope. It shows a large positive deviation from Rolf's law. This azeotropic mixture boils at 78.2 degrees Celsius, while the water boils at 100 degrees Celsius and ethanol at 78.5 degrees Celsius. Now next question. What is the maximum boiling azeotrope? So, the maximum boiling azeotrope occurs 
if the solution exhibits negative deviation from ideality. Hence this azeotrope is also called as a negative azeotrope. Maximum boiling azeotrope will boil at a temperature higher than the boiling points of pure components. Hence they are called maximum boiling azeotropes. These types of mixtures exhibit lower vapor pressure in the highest boiling point. Example An azeotropic mixture of hydrogen chloride and water is a negative azeotrope. It shows a large negative deviation from Rolt's law. This azeotropic mixture boils at 110 degrees Celsius, while the water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, and HCl at minus 84 degrees Celsius. Now next question. What is the heterogeneous azeotrope? If constituents of azeotropic mixtures are not completely miscible, then an azeotrope can be found inside the miscibility gap. So, phase splitting may occur for a minimum boiling azeotrope, with a large deviation from Rolt's law. This leads to the formation of a minimum boiling heterogeneous azeotrope, which has a vapor phase in equilibrium with two liquid phases. Constituents of these azeotropes are not completely miscible. These types of azeotrope are also called heterozeotrope. For example, an azeotropic mixture of chloroform and water. When they are shaken together and left to stand, then they form two separate layers. This mixture boils at 53.3 while the boiling point of water is 100 and chloroform is 61.2 now next question what is the homogeneous azeotrope if constituents of an azeotropic mixture are completely miscible in all proportions with each other then this type of azeotrope is called homogeneous azeotrope. For example, any amount of ethanol can be mixed with any amount of water to form a homogeneous azeotropic mixture. So that's all about important questions on distillation. In the next video, we will discuss another set of questions. If you like my video, please like my video, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to my YouTube channel.